To politics now, and the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, has dropped his strongest hint yet that we're all set for an October election. That's if the Prime Minister can survive all the leadership challenges, Lords rebellions and plummeting poll ratings that he's facing. And that's just today. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Speaker, violent prisoners released early because the Tories wrecked the criminal justice system. Three and a half thousand small boat arrivals already this year because the Tories lost control of the borders. Yeah. The NHS struggling to see people because the Tories broke it. Millions paying more on their mortgages. A budget that hit pensioners. A £46 billion hole in his sums. Why is the Prime Minister so scared to call an election? We're still joined by political <laughs> campaigns consultant Rebecca Ryan. Well, I think old Keir answered his own question there, didn't he? <laughs> oh, you know, got all this this rubbish, this terrible state the nation's in. Why don't you want to call, call an election? Maybe, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> Sunak suspects he might lose. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, the thing is, nobody really trusts Keir Starmer either, do they? I think the thing is, people are just sick to death of politicians. And when there is, you know, you can't put a, a piece of paper between the policies of the left and the right, mm. what people are, are going, you know, going to do is they're going to give the Tories a good kicking because they're going to say, mm. you know what, you've had all of this time, you've had an 80-seat majority, why haven't you listened to us? Why didn't mm. you deliver on your promises? You know, so, you know what, let's why give the other side... Why didn't you consider being a Conservative? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, this is the thing. Yeah. You say yeah. you can't put a, a cigarette paper between the left and the right, but you could put the Grand Canyon between the public and politics yes. right now, and that's exactly. been the case yeah. for a really long time. And I think yeah. environmentally, Sunak is rather hoping to hang on until, you know, inflation comes down, we get a bit of growth, he might be able to do some more with taxes, so on and so forth. But it's, it's not going to work, is it? I mean, I think the general public are quite alive to the fact that uh, all of these things are largely the environmental factors. Yep. Yep. I don't think the Conservatives are going to get the plaudits mm. for if suddenly the economic uh, environment perks up a bit, and I, I, I would fear that it may not. Mm. Um, but it is, it's a sad state of uh, it's a sad state of politics, really, when actually I think if you polled a lot of people, they feel they've got to vote one of these two parties and want neither. Well, absolutely. And this is the thing, as we've seen, is that, you know, inflation has been coming down and the polls for the Tories are still coming down. So it's, the people are just... Not, they're just sick to death of it, of, sick to death of not being listened to. Uh, and as you say, well, the, the issue will be for the Conservatives is getting people out to vote. Because as we've seen in some of these by-elections, actually what's happened isn't that, you know, a load more people are voting Labour. It's just the Tories are sitting No, they're home. not. Actually, yeah. the Labour vote shares also <laughs> gone down, yeah. which is remarkable. Everyone thinks this is a great success yeah. story for Labour. But if you break down the by-election results, Actually, the amount of people who voted Labour has actually dropped, and yeah. that's when they actually didn't win those yeah. last and time round. Of course, round. the Tories are going to try to own the fact that uh, we've got these uh, impressive inflation down figures, <laughs> uh, uh, better than expected, uh, down 4.0%. Uh, and uh, of course, they'll try to own that, but everybody with half a brain, that excludes me, but uh, anybody with half a brain knows it's not really the Tories, this is international, mm -hmm. so uh, they can forget about that. Meanwhile, perhaps partly because of that. Sunak's popularity uh, in a poll in the Telegraph uh, shows that 45% of 2019 Tory voters think Sunak should lead the party into the next election, <laughs> as uh, Alex said earlier. That's almost, that's almost off. Almost <laughs> off. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the thing is, that's a, those forty-four percent. You know, Tory voters uh, and members are very pro pragmatic people, and that won't be people who think he's actually going to be a great leader. It's just they they know that if they do another leadership Literally. election, it's going to be <laughs> even worse. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, just leave him because actually, you know, if they brought in a new leader at this point they're going to be tarred with all of this mess. So they'll want someone fresh to come in after a general election. Yeah, well, they're, they're, now, they're talking about it. Tom Tugendhat. Yeah. Uh, he seems to be the leader, but, of course, He's the new earlier in the week, named. it was all about Penny Morden. But yeah. all the Before right... that, it was Kemi Badenot, yeah, don't forget. Ke Kemi Badenot, <laughs> I'll take. I'll take Tom Tugendhat, but mm. I won't take Penny Morden. No. But, and uh, right, the right-wingers, who I don't even think think about this yeah. kind of thing, they're, oh, Penny Morden with the sword and the coronation. <laughs> they <laughs> she carried the they sword forgot, from They forgot that she stood up in Parliament and broke her Parliament parliamentary rules by mm. lying to yeah. the House, saying trans women are women. A trans woman is a woman. That's not true. And it's the kind
kind of wokery that has ruined her career in terms of ever being the leader. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a big problem for Penny. And that comes down to she's got a twin brother who, you know, is very pro all of these sort of like, you so know, she thought it was self ID and all of that. For her career Indeed. Time. But, you know, so she's completely, um, unfortunately, uh, ruined her chances there because the women's vote would, just would, would turn away. Um, but yeah, it's always this conversation about who next, who next. I don't think Tom Tugendhat is particularly on the right of the party. I don't think he's particularly supported by people on the right of the Conservative mm. Party. He's very much a centrist. People like him because he was in the army or yeah, whatever. People like um, former soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they well, well, they should. Well, yeah. they should. I think, look, I think what, what, what Tom represents. I know Tom very well. I'm a big fan of Tom. Uh, he's not. It wasn't was a Brexiteer. Was it your 40th birthday party? Was it my 40th? Well, oh, you should have introduced yourself. I was getting. <laughs> I didn't see him. I didn't see anybody. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I'm I'm drunk. Like, I can't even remember that night. But he was there. Um, but uh, no, I think what he represents is he's very strong on geopolitics. Mm. He's very fierce against China. Very sort of clear yeah. and direct when it comes to foreign policy. And we live in a global world where we need that leadership. We don't need to be weak right now. And I can forgive him for not being a Brexiteer on that account. Um, prison but, overcrowding. Prison overcrowding. He's yeah. Gonna... Uh, Rishi, on one of his many rebellions, uh, particularly from the right-wing backbenchers, uh, is that he wants to sort of basically ditch all prison sentences of less than a year uh, to ease the jail overcrowding situation. And the right-wing MPs, uh, quite rightly, in my view, say, no, 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 you can't yeah. do that. You can't yeah. sort of decriminalise crime. Uh, so he's going against once again against a sort of sacred mm. Tory tenant, law and order. Absolutely. And this is the thing that people, the voters are getting so frustrated about is seeing, you know, these crimes being committed. We've got um, our borders of just being um, not respected on a, on a daily basis, hundreds and thousands. And it's just a case of that. Um, the, 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 it's like the Conservative Party really can't get to grips with that. I think it is still haunted by this ghost of being, the, being told it's the nasty party. Yeah, that was Theresa May, yeah. worst ever political speech. <laughs> Indeed, and they're desperately always trying to compensate for that, and rather than actually delivering what the average British person wants, which is, you know, really firm law and order. And, mm. and decent mm. borders. Yeah.